Uh, let's continue with our chat about all things technology and more so AI. So we've been talking about media a little earlier on, but how do healthcare workers really feel about AI, the advent of AI? Let's ask our next guest. He is the Group Chief Clinical Innovation Officer and the CEO of Bajil Medical City. It is a warm welcome to Dr. Mushtaba Ali Khan, who joins us. Uh, Dr. Khan, thank you so much indeed for being thank with you. us. Really appreciate your time as well. Um, listen, let's talk AI. Going back to that sort of age-old water cooler discussion at the moment. Is a robot going to steal my job? Is ChatGPT going to steal my job? I mean, you, one would think that, yes, OK, medical science, very data-driven, AI and generative AI and technology is going to help in that field. But is it ever going to replace what we call bedside manner, that bedside sense that doctors and nurses have? I think that's what we all crave, is to be able to have that empathy from another human being, especially at such a critical moment when you're in the hospital getting care and being able to understand the diagnosis directly from another human. But I think that fear of AI is sometimes overstated. Uh, I think we've all heard the phrase where, you know, AI won't take your job, but those who know AI will. And I think that's the true thing, is where the next step in healthcare and, and so many industries is that how do we leverage AI to improve the care that we're delivering for patients, mm -hmm. improving that journey from start to finish that can take and alleviate and liberate our doctors, our nurses from the bureaucratic stuff that bogs us down and allow them to do that empathy mm. that you're talking about. Yeah. Well, Dr. Khan, I don't know if you heard our conversation. I'm a little bit concerned about AI, but mainly when it comes to like creative fields, when it comes to admin fields, I think the healthcare field is where it's definitely needed because it can help with diagnosis. It can help doctors actually focus on surgeries and bedside manner and not have to deal with data per se. What would you say are the most exciting technologies that are coming out now using artificial intelligence? So to that point, where it can alleviate all that burdensome stuff that doctors do on a day-to-day -day basis is one of the biggest things is documentation. Uh, making sure things are documented appropriately. Now with ambient technology, and that's what we're trying to do within our own company, is to be able to have ambient technology listening into that conversation between the doctor and his patient and to be able to document all the key things, identify the right diagnosis, and augment the clinical decisioning. Is a certain lab necessary, imaging necessary? This medication might be better suited because this person has this cross reaction with it. And so to help augment that clinical interaction so the doctor isn't bogged down with the bureaucratic stuff and is able to deliver the care that the patient wants. I think it's interesting as well because then at least we could read the doctor's handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> it would just be typed. Um, what about then talking, I guess, a more of a, a, a serious worry for people worldwide is about privacy and data breaches and anonymity and things because you'd like to think that that's okay now? I think that will always be a problem but I think if we you know have a true um, method to how we approach integrating these technology because every technology looks so shiny and looks like this is going to be the cutting edge thing yeah. but we've got to be very uh, purposeful for why this technology will improve the care and then make sure it has all the fail safes to protect our patients and that the records and all the information that goes into patient care. Because trust goes a long way. Absolutely. It? Yeah. Once it's breached, a lot is lost. Yes. What about diagnostics though? Again, back to Ferris's point, one would assume that given the data that AI can generate and process that it would work with diagnosis. But then I go back to your point about a sort of gut instinct as well and that sort of doctors and nurses understanding of the human being. Um, where are we at with the research we know with AI, generative AI and diagnostics? So to your point, I think that gestalt that physicians have, right? <laughs> that ability to say, this person doesn't look right. Maybe mm. everything, blood pressure looks okay, all the diagnostics, labs look okay, but there's something in our gut that's telling us that something's off with this patient. It's very difficult to replace that in our human intuition. But subsequently, where can we, now that if I do have that gestalt or if I have that suspicion that something is going on, now that where I can utilize generative AI and other key technologies to be able to say, I have a suspicion based on what I'm understanding, what should I be considering? And allow for that cl clinical augmentation in my clinical decision. I love that. They, do, they do say, Dr. Hearn, if you want to become a doctor, you have to really want to be a doctor because it's a lot of studying, at least seven years, but then you have to keep studying throughout your career because there's always 100%. new things, new technologies coming out. Would you say that AI can help existing doctors stay ahead of the trends and their 
making sure that they're learning what they need to learn to make it and to con continue to make it in the medical field? The thing is, uh, medical knowledge is growing astronomically. Literally on a day-to-day -day basis, we hit, get so many different new uh, research or scientific papers that are being published. There's no humanly way possible to keep up with that. Mm. So we need to leverage technology. We need to leverage those um, resources that can help us. I, I keep on using word, that word augment because it needs to augment. So even when I took my medical boards, uh, we have now access to something called Up to Date. Up to Date is a medical repository of all the latest medical information and be able to say, I know what I need to find, but what is the latest research on this and help me make that decision. So when I'm uh, interacting with that patient, uh, if I suspect this is based on the clinical diagnosis, uh, sorry, the diagnostics that I'm getting, mm. what should I be considering? Based on the research that, I, that is coming out, what medications potentially would be, or latest uh, you know, treatment modalities might be uh, beneficial to this patient. All of these things, there's no way that I can keep up with every aspect of it, but I've got to marry my cl clinical knowledge with all the latest information and give that patient the best possible chance of getting the cure that they need. And there's so much pressure on, on anyone in the medical field, isn't there? Like we expect to come to you and you sort of immediately know the answers. What about pushback then from the medical professionals that don't want to, to use AI within their day-to-day, -day, their traditional roles, if you like? I think everybody is waking up very quickly. There's, you know, I think first phase was with regards to internet, with Google, when people were able to search their medical diagnoses. Um, and it give a clunky, inf you know, response. It's always Here. terrible, yes. isn't it? Never Google. <laughs> Chat is Chat GPT and other generative AI is much more refined. Okay. So there's very little that doctors can start, you know, resisting that, right? And it's how do I use that information to help my patient make the best possible decisions? At the end of the day, we know what's on the. F those who don't change will will be left behind, right? We have to all change. That's the that's a natural path. But how do I utilize that information to modify myself and modify my practice and get uh, the medical disciplines that I'm working mm. in to advance further? Mm. I love your theory of like support and augment rather than replace. I think that's a really good a key way of looking at it. But is there the risk as well, given the pace of change and given the benefits of AI that medical institutions or the medical industry can become too reliant on AI as well? Is it important to keep that balance moving forward? Yes, I, I agree. I think sometimes and so we all know about AI hallucinations, right? Yeah. Where it can start to make up information. If we don't have somebody who is skilled, who has that knowledge to be able to say, that response does not make sense yeah. in this context, yeah. then we are gonna become you know, susceptible to giving the patient the wrong treatment or uh, give them the wrong care plan. So we've got to really be mindful. And one of the things that we're trying to do within our organization of Borgil is to really make smart hospitals, that AI is like the backdrop to how things are running, but still human oversight mm -hmm. is happening to ensure the clinical decisioning is taking place, right? We're still integrated. Our key people are still part and parcel of the healthcare journey for every patient but they're utilizing the information to streamline and make the process as easy as possible. Well, Dr. Khan, thankfully you're making us feel a lot better and it's only the start of the show. You are gonna be with us as our guest co-host, but right now we're gonna take a little break, but stay tuned because we have a performance happening later on in the show. We already know who it is, but let's hear a little something from Aston. Hey, my name is Aston and tonight I'll be performing Cool Baby Cool. 